In this video, we're going to talk about the number one most important thing when it comes down to having growth in your life as a man, and that is starting right up here in your mind. I just recorded this call, and I hope it's going to be a benefit to you as you rewatch it and learn how to renew your mind biblically, to be done with porn for good, to be able to make an impact not only in your family right now, but for generations to follow, and also then create an awesome life diving right into it. The reality is that we need that remove renewed mind. Everything begins in our mind. If a GPS is outdated and it doesn't have the updates of what's going on, where you're going, what's going to end up happening? In the wrong place. Exactly. So you're going to show up in the wrong place because of that. So you need to constantly update your GPS because your GPS gives you your destination. But what if I was to say that your destination has been wrong or you go wrong destination right what is we gonna what is gonna end up happening is that you are going to show up to the wrong place it's very simple so in the renewing of our mind what we're trying to do is we're trying to make our destination and our life of who we are fit in line with god's destination okay and so that's essentially what we're doing in renewing the mind is that i want my destination and god's destination to equal out and so Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about some context here, right? Because I think it's really encouraging, right? So we got transformed. What does transformed mean when you're transformed? Is this Greek word, which means metamorphosis, right? Literally, what is happening is that you are being changed. A good illustration of metamorphosis is what we did with our kids one time. We have this cocoon thing and caterpillars that we bought, like a kit, and it's awesome to see these caterpillars crawl up, make a cocoon, and then they turn into a butterfly. That's the idea of metamorphosis. And the thing is that in that cocoon, what happens is that the animal itself, right, the little bug, actually completely changes in its DNA. And this is the same idea that Paul has when it's talking about transformation, is God is saying that you're just transforming from one one degree to from one degree of glory to another right so just think about you today as god's son right here let's say if you're right here you're not who you used to be back here okay but you're not yet who you should be over here which is made in the image of christ and so you're continually being transformed and how does this transformation happen where you're more like christ it happens by the renewal of your mind your mind is changing and what you value and what God values uh, are beginning to add up. Okay, big thing that I'm noticing with guys is that a lot of guys, what they want in their life, okay, is they want to live a life of purpose. This is very key, and essentially, everyone that I talk to, why do we want to quit porn? There's many reasons, right? But we want to live a life of purpose. Guess what? what chapters 1 through 11 of Romans are about? They're about who you are in Christ, which is your identity, or we could also say your wealth in Christ. And then verses 12, chapters 12 to 16 is about your walk in Christ, or we could call it your integrity, and identity to integrity, wealth to your walk. Guess how your walk and your life of purpose is going to be, because chapter 12, verses 3 and following actually talks about this is how you're going to be useful in God's hands. Like, this is the giftings that God has given you. These are the gifts that he has. And so love each other, respect each other, use your gifts for the body, et cetera. The way that it, do, the way that it begins is verses 1 and 2, that you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you want to fulfill your purpose, right? You want to fulfill your calling? You got to do it by the transforming of the renewing of your mind. So let's talk about a few things when we're talking about the renewal of the mind. What are, I want to ask you guys, what are things that men tend to do or top mistakes that men tend to have when it comes to renewing of the mind? Mistakes? You mean like we don't do it? Okay. So I'll just write mistakes over here. So yes, we don't do it. That's a good one. <laughs> but I'm talking about mistakes <laughs> when you're trying to do it. So the question is, yeah, you don't do it, but what happened upstream to cause you not even to start? What are some mistakes that we might have? Go ahead. Guarding our heart. Okay. So the mistake is we don't guard the heart. Do our like eyes and ears. Okay. What else? I think sometimes we probably 
don't know how to start, maybe. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about not knowing, right? So not guarding the heart, not knowing. It's actually the three steps in counseling. One is you don't know. Number two is you know, but you don't know how. And number three is you know and you know how, but you just don't want to do it. But yeah, not knowing, <laughs> right? I would add another thing. Transformation, which is our goal, our destination, cannot happen if we are if we are conforming to the world. So Vlad, you brought up a good point, right? You're not guarding your eyes and your ears. Guess what? <laughs> you're conforming <laughs> faster to this world than you're conforming to God's word and God's ways. And so everything that you're seeing through your eyes, like the reality is we have 50,000 thoughts a day. All right. You get hit. I don't know what the statistic is per day, but it's something ridiculous of thousands of ads, right? A day that you get hit with that are all forming the way that you're thinking. So you might have a worldly mindset because you're allowing these things. What could also be happening is you're allowing, like I said, negative thoughts to dominate. You have 50,000 thoughts. How many of these thoughts are typically positive and how many are negative? I want you to just assess in your own life right now. How many thoughts on a given day you would have are positive? Let's give a percentage, right? Out of 100%, how many are positive? How many are negative? I Let's would say more than 50% of my thoughts are in the, the category of negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would, yeah, I would argue that oftentimes we're not doing Philippians 4 8, which is, it says, put on the filter. Whatever is good, beautiful, honorable, trustworthy, worthy of praise, think about these things. The reality is we'll wake up in a day and right away from the bat, oh, I got so much to do today, or this day sucks, or I had a bad night of sleep. By the time I'm walking down the stairs, I'm already thinking negatively, right? So we have negative thoughts. And then I think, honestly, to be able to renew the mind, we're lacking consistency. Consistency in different ways, like consistency in scripture reading consistency in, I would also add understanding our identity, which means you're reading your biblical affirmations. All those things are common mistakes that men, I would say, make. And so let's talk about times flying. So renewing of the mind, how does this happen? Because this is the very beginning of where change happens. I'm going to draw this paradigm. You'll see me draw this. If you've been on calls before, you know this, right? When we start change, we're oftentimes men say, I want to change an action in my life. I want to love my wife more. I want to get off of porn. I want to make a greater impact. But one of the things that men often neglect is what is upstream from that, which is emotion, right? And emotion is, is driven by a thought in your mind. And that thought, right? Uh -huh. So if you have a negative thought, let's go back to the 50,000 thoughts a day. Okay, you have a negative thought like, man, I'm not really looking to work. What kind of emotion is that going to produce in you? It's going to produce something like, I just feel overwhelmed or I feel unhappy or stuck. What kind of action are you going to create at work? You're going to create lack, lackluster action. You're not excited, right? So preceding the thought then, one of the things that we don't often think about is this idea of mindset. So renewing of the mind is not just tackling your thoughts. The renewing of the mind is actually tackling your mindset and your mindset, if we were to even go further, it is your beliefs that you have, personal beliefs that you have assessed, right? It's your beliefs. It is your view on life. Okay. So what are some mindsets people have? Perfectionist mindset, passive mindset. Everything is supposed to good in my supposed to go well in my life mindset. Right. Okay? So what is that going to do? Because what we need to understand is that mindset is the filter through which you see a situation. So let me give you a quick example. All right. So this is a simple one. It's a couple at the beach. Couple's hanging out at the beach. The sun is setting. And a guy walks by and he sees that couple. And a single guy, and he's 32 years old, guy one walks by and he says, you know what, man, God's holding something back from me. That couple is happy, but man, uh, so yeah, God's holding something back for me. I don't feel, uh, I feel like I'm behind in life. And this is leading then to thoughts that he's having. What is, what kind of emotion is he going to have? Depression. Depression, unhappiness. He's going to be thinking why, but why? It's because of his mindset. Because in his mindset, he thinks that at 32, he should be married with three kids. 
he thinks in his mindset that, man, God is not being good to me. And this is why I am not married yet. He is thinking that there's a certain like lifestyle that he should be having. Maybe it's culturally, maybe it was how he was brought up or whatever it is, right? But it's causing this mindset is causing him to have certain thoughts, which are negative, which are they going to lead to certain emotions like what? I'm lonely, the emotion of loneliness or the feeling of overwhelm, like I'm feeling behind in life. And then he has to deal with that emotion by taking an action. And he'll go to drink alcohol. He will go to watch porn. He will maybe actually call a friend. <laughs> you never know, right? Could be a positive one. But the point here is the mindset is so vital. Having what we call a biblical worldview. Now, take us the second guy, for example. So this is guy number one. Guy number two sees that same couple and he's thinking, oh, that's such a beautiful thing. God's going to provide for me in my timing, right? I'm 32, but I'm trusting in the Lord. Those thoughts then are going to produce what? Emotions of content, joy, right? Satisfaction. And the action is he's just going to keep walking down the beach and enjoying the sun, enjoying the weather. Whereas these other guys, where the first guy is not going to be. So do you see how this mindset will affect everything that you do? Let's take a guy who's working right? And something goes wrong in your job that's unexpected. All of a sudden, you have a thought, oh, no, this is making me behind in life. I'm going to be behind in the day, etc. A lot of guys have a, the perfectionist mindset means you have no room for buffer. But imagine in your mindset, you had a room for buffer. You were just shooting for 80% instead of 100. And that mindset then causes you to have the right thoughts, emotions, actions. So, we are, re we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So this is super vital. My wife and I, we've been thinking about this in terms of parenting. What is our mindset? Do we allow our kids to maybe not obey the first time when we would like them to, right? We would love that, but it doesn't always happen, right? Are we okay with the mistakes that are going to go on in that day? Are we okay with our schedule getting shifted because our kid has a 30-minute tantrum? Are we okay with these things? That's a mindset perspective. And if I have that mindset, it's going to cause me to have proper emotions. Let me tell you guys, for many years, I personally struggled right, in this area of emotion because I personally really struggled in the area of mindset. I was a perfectionist. I had no margin for error. I wanted things done my way all the time the first time. I wanted, I, and this was a, a more of a mindset issue. It was not about my situation at all. And I want you guys to get this, right? If you're on the call right now, this is, has nothing to do with your situation. <laughs> right, You're, The situation itself is neutral. Situations are neutral, but it is your mindset that then gives meaning to your situation. So you're stuck down here in porn. You're stuck down here in anger. You're stuck down here in apathy, whatever, or alcohol. You don't work on this. You got to work all the way right up here in the level of the mindset. So what does that mean? How do we do this practically? What say you guys? Give me some ideas. What can you do to practically renew the mind? The journaling that we're all supposed to be doing certainly helps recalibrate every morning and every evening if we're consistent. And I think just the first thing there, talking about what to be grateful for helps me not go too far into negativity. Yeah, exactly. So let's write journaling. Now, why so? What does journaling do? It fixes this area right here, right? the area of emotion. Why? Because you are processing specifically your thoughts, right? We have thoughts right here. Journaling works on emotion because you're processing your thoughts. You're observing what happened, when it happened, why it happened. And so you're saying, you know what? By the way, I think, are you guys hearing an echo when I'm talking? No? Okay, good. All right. So you're journaling, you're processing your thoughts, and so what you're also doing is you can reframe your thoughts as you journal. You can reframe from, hey, look, I, got, I had a guy yesterday I was talking to. He was he had to uh, sell his house in Texas, okay? And he just felt, dude, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Why? Because he felt like this four-bedroom house for him as a single guy, <laughs> that was a waste. He didn't find roommates to cover the expenses. And now what is he feeling? He's feeling overwhelmed. He's feeling like, man, I just wasted time and money, et cetera. And I said, let's reframe that. Let's remember, let's bring up thoughts like, let's think about God allowed this to happen in my life for a reason, because now he's going to downsize his house, have more funds to help out in a ministry at the church, right? I was like, how does that change your emotions? You don't feel as stuck anymore or as behind anymore. 
And we also talked about uh, a few other things, but reframing, right? Your thoughts that will lead you then to the proper emotion. So journaling, okay? Processing thoughts. What else? For me, one of the things that helped me the most is changing my perspective. Okay. Like I've told people before, you can pray as much as you want. You can do all the things that you've done before, but repeating the same habits is going to give you the same result until you change your perspectives. Mm-hmm. And for me, one of the things that I had to do, and, and this is a testimony to like how this works, but changing perspective is coincides with putting in the word. So you can't have, you can't do what I'm doing and not be in the word, but I was for the longest upset with someone because they, I would come home to a dirty house and I, what uh, you said, you were a perfectionist and you wanted everything done detailed correctly and clean. And I was, I'm a bit of a neat freak and I would come home to a dirty house and that got to me a lot. And I, as much as I prayed, nothing happened. Why? Yeah. Cause I kept doing the exact same thing. Kept coming home, kept thinking those thoughts that you just mentioned, kept just dwelling into them. Even though I did my journal, the thoughts were still there yep. until one day reading scripture God talked about changing your perspective. Nothing's going to happen if you don't change your perspective. So that's what I started doing. I mm-hmm. went from, and I think you helped me out with this once. You said, instead of seeing there a messy house, just say, hey, now I have something to clean. Now I have something to do. And I actually have a messy house because I have kids and a family, right? <laughs> that changes yeah. your perspective. <laughs> yeah. But my point was that my end result was, I don't like a dirty house, but if I clean it, I'll have a clean house and that would be my reward. Mm -hmm. I just had to change my perspective. Every time I would come home, I wouldn't see it as anger. I would just be like, oh, something to do. I Mm -hmm. I know what the outcome is going to be. I love the outcome. So let's get it done. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I think part of it is also the lies versus truth thing, right? So replacing lies versus truth, even in your example, the lie is unless I have a clean house, I can't be content or happy. You could replace that with the truth of God called me to serve and sacrifice as a husband and lay my life down for my family, right? No matter what. So going through a list of lies versus truth. And so let's even, let's bring this back to maybe lust or vices, right? It's, this is a practical thing that you can do. What is the lie that Satan would want you to believe about lust? And we've done this multiple times, so you guys know it, right? But give me some lies we believe, right? It doesn't, I'll start with one. It doesn't affect anybody. One lie would be that it's better than what you previously have for those that have a significant other. What do you mean by that? For those that are in a relationship and they're lusting, the mm-hmm. lie could be, the lie that be that, why don't you get into your fantasy and fulfill your fantasy? It's better than yeah. what you have at home. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, like it's it's going to satisfy. I guess that's yeah. what we could summarize it at. It doesn't affect, it, it will satisfy me. Let's just do another one. And what... Yeah, let's just understand like rational lies means rational. We create rational lies. Okay. So over here, if we can if we can justify it in our thoughts, we will then take action on it later on. Okay. It doesn't affect anybody. It satisfies you replace it with the truth, right? It affects my body. It affects the church because I show up half-hearted. I'm not interested in serving other people. I come to home group with nothing to give. I'm empty. It does affect everyone around me. It affects my wife if I'm married. I'm not into her as much. Or the lie that, oh, this sin will satisfy. Well, it doesn't because God says that he is the one who will satisfy us and our cup will be overflowing. And there's a lot, a lot more like I deserve it. And the reality is, no, you don't deserve anything. You deserve God's wrath, but God was kind to you. And if you... Yeah, you could deserve something, just find it in a healthy outlet, not an unhealthy one. Let me, I want to say a lot, but time's wrapping up. There's other things that you can do, but these are things as you're starting to do, journaling, changing the perspective, writing down lies versus truth. These are all ways that you can begin to renew your mind. Because what you're doing ultimately through all this, as you're even reading your Bible, is you're taking, once again, we come up here, which is up here, right? I want my destination. I want what I believe and what God believes to actually equal out. And that happens when I'm in the word, I'm soaking in the word and I'm bathing in the word. And the word is now changing my mind. Why? Because then I want everything that I do to be impulsive, but be impulsive in a positive way. You don't have to then fight. Do you guys understand what I'm getting at? If you renew your mind, you don't have to fight to say no, because your mind has already changed. 
<laughs> I love it. I was listening to John Piper's sermon like a few weeks ago and he said this and I was like, this is so simple. How did I, I know it, it's somewhere, but it's, it's more natural. Dogs bark, cats meow, sharks swim, Christians walk in the will of God. It's going to be natural for you, right? You're going to positively do the things impulsively, naturally, because you're lining up with God's will. Okay. Guys, got a few more minutes. Do you guys have any questions on this? Want to get want to give some time for questions, maybe five minutes, and then we'll just close and let you guys go. I just want to give feedback and say, I appreciate this. It's very helpful. Anytime that you can make the insurmountable and overwhelming battle feel a lot simpler and just show me that I'm lying to myself, that it's not as that, that it's harder than it is. And you could just show me a really simple little way of thinking about it that breaks me out of this overcomplication of thinking I can never be free. That's super, super valuable for me. And so, yeah, I really appreciate it. And yeah, brother, just, brother. Just, break, just breaking free from lies, dude. And I need, I need all the help I can get. If you guys finish watching this video and you're thinking that was so helpful and beneficial, it helped me to unlock and see the things that I'm struggling with, but you need a little bit more help and guidance. You would like someone to walk your hand through the process week by week, showing you how to practically renew your mind so that you have lasting change. Uh, there's a link down below this video. It's a link to my calendar. You can book in a slot there. This is very no pressure call. I'll just help you to see if there's any limiting beliefs you're having that are keeping you from unlocking true freedom. And I'll share with you then, if you're interested, what it would look like to be part of the Intentional Men community so that you can experience these calls on a weekly basis and be blessed.